In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, we gather today on the fourth Sunday of Lent, Litare Sunday. And we bring with us all of our prayers, our thoughts, our joys, our difficulties. In a very special way, we bring to our prayer at this Eucharist the souls of two of our Holy Ghost Prep alumni who have gone home to the Father to be in the fullness of the resurrection. We pray for them, for their welcome into the kingdom. We pray for their family and friends who mourn them. So we keep in a very special way in our prayers Brian Marchesani, who was the class of 1996, the brother of Michael, who was the class of 99, and we also keep in our prayer Blake Hobson, the class of 2011. That the Lord might greet them at the gates of heaven and welcome them into the fullness of eternal life, and that their family, their friends, all who know them and love them, be comforted with that faith and that assurance of life everlasting with the Lord. And so as we begin this celebration, let us call to mind whatever gets in the way of us being faithful to our own call, to love, to listen, to share, to grow, to be the best we can for God, for each other, and for ourselves. Let us ask for pardon and grace. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. And let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and their dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of the Lord. They despised his warning scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all of its palaces afire. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became the servants of the king, the king of the Chaldeans and his sons until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All of this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbath. During all the time it lays waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth 
the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Let my tongue be silent if ever I forget you. Let my tongue be silent if ever I forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land we hung our harps. Let my tongue be silent if ever I forget you. For there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silent if ever I forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. Our second reading is taken from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he has for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised up with him, and seated us with him in the heaven in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift of God. It is not from works so that no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The Word of the Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the servant in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light. That was because their deeds were evil. For anyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works may not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be truly and clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. This is truly a day of love songs. 
of this very beautiful and, and joyous reaching of the Lord to us. And I think that's why you might see in certain parishes, today is one of the two Sundays of the entire year where pink is a possibility, or rose, I suppose, is the more correct uh, name to give it, rose-colored vestments. Today is called Lecare Sunday, to rejoice, coming from the very beginning, the entrance antiphon from Isaiah. It says, Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her coming, at her consoling breath. Because in the midst of our Lenten journey, of this time of penance, repentance, this sense of returning to the Lord, and you know in Greek, the word for both repent and return are the same thing. Because they both refer to going back to our origin. And our origin, our only source of life, the center of who we are, is God. And so we return to God. We repent. And it is not that we have this sense of being overwhelmed by our sinfulness, overwhelmed by realizing how much we still need to grow, by realizing at times our lack of love, our lack of charity, our lack of generosity and patience, that we need to look at our faults and limitations to push those limitations back with the help of God, God's teaching, God's grace, God's leadership, coming through scripture, through the people around us, through so many events in everyday life. But we don't let ourselves get discouraged and bogged down no matter how many times we trip and fall, we stand up again. And so we have this Sunday, Lekare Sunday, reminding us rejoice because we know no matter what, God is there loving us. God is there with outstretched arms calling us home. In class this week, we've been talking about the sacrament of matrimony. And a lot of the students were surprised to, to hear that whole thought that marriage, the marriage between a man and a woman, is called to mirror, reflect, and challenge us to grow deeper in understanding the love God has for us. And when you think of those vows, you know, in, in sickness and in health, for richer or for poorer, for better or for worse. That the sense that this couple vows themselves to each other no matter what. There's no strings attached. It's not, it's not as long as I'm happy or I'll help you if you help me. But I will be loving you, supporting you, with you, there for you. Because I love you no matter rich or poor, sick or healthy, you know, whatever the situation, better or worse. And that's what God is always saying to us. And it was so touching in that first reading, he even talks about the fact that early and often did the Lord, the God of their ancestors, send messengers to them because he had compassion on his people. Every time the people messed up, the Lord didn't just give up, but he kept calling them back through different messengers, through the prophets, through different signs and wonders of his love and his presence. And they still kept messing up. And yet, in the most unexpected ways, he continued to reach out. That story of Cyrus, I don't know how well you know Cyrus, but I was always impressed even when I was younger when I first found out that this famous King Cyrus, King of Prussia, or Prussia, sorry, <laughs> King of Prussia, I've been living in Pennsylvania too long, but that's, for those of you who don't know, that's a town actually in, in Pennsylvania, I hope it's in Pennsylvania, anyway, there's a King of Prussia somewhere, um, King of Persia, and what is so amazing is how the Lord worked through it, because he said, in the, you know, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, 
the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to let the people go. He looked around and said, you know what, this really isn't good that these Hebrew people here are slaves and why aren't they in their own land? And even though Cyrus had another religion and he didn't convert, he didn't somehow suddenly join the Hebrew people in their culture, in their religion, in their language, but he somehow moved by God knew to do the right thing. And so he set those captives free and he rebuilt the temple. I mean, can you imagine he rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem? How amazing, but because God said inspired him to do that. What do we allow the Lord to inspire us to do? We can't be inspired by the Lord if we're not listening, if we don't pay attention. And how much do we accept the love of God that comes to us in so many unexpected ways if we're not open, including open to other people? I could imagine that people at the time might have been kind of suspicious, like, okay, wait a minute, Cyrus is the king of Persia, and he's not Jewish, and it was his people, actually, who, you know, kind of made a lot of problems for the Jews, and now he's suddenly going to just like let everybody go home and free them. And not only that, he's going to rebuild their temple. And how he says it so beautifully, whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of this God's people, let them go up and may their God be with them. Do we look at people and judge them because we think we know? Oh, I know what those people are like. How divided we are by races by colors, by culture, by linguistic groups, by religion, by gender, by age, by social economic status, by sexuality, by so many things we have broken the world into us and them. Are we open that God works through all of us? God has the people freed thanks to a foreigner, a pagan, one of the people of the enemy, if you want to call him that. How do we think we know the hearts and minds of everyone based on some external or some reference to the past or some other person that just happens to be of the same group and therefore we lump everybody together? So it's a great call to realize, but also the excitement to realize just as God can work through the most unexpected people, like the king of Persia, suddenly jumping up and freeing everybody and rebuilding the temple, God might suddenly inspire you to do something equally as amazing. And you will suddenly realize God calling you to reach out to someone you might not even like. Or to share a gift you didn't even know you had, to develop it. To forgive someone who hurt you so badly. To be creative in ways you never even imagined. There's no end to what can happen when we listen to the Lord and are ready to work with the Lord. To realize that we are the hands and the heart, the shoulder and the mouth of God in this world today. And that's why it says later that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Imagine we all know that. We learned that as little children. God so loved the world that he gave his only son to show us the way. And then that son, knowing how difficult it is, because he came as one of us, a human, to live so fully and to show us you can do it as a human. It's not an excuse, oh, I'm only human. But rather we should say, I can do this. I can love, I can forgive, I can be generous, I can be caring, I can build bridges and bring unity and goodness and joy to the world because I'm human. Because being human is to be in the image and likeness of God. And that's what I'll do in my life because I am a human. I am the image and likeness of God. And that will, that will define my whole life. Because I know that God so loves us. He came to live among us. Because 
we were so hard-headed we couldn't get the message from the prophets. I don't know, maybe we were thinking, well, you know, they're just human like us, or why should I pay that much attention? Maybe they weren't even impressed enough by people like Cyrus, who were so outside the community, and yet did God's work so amazingly. So finally, God himself came. It's like we couldn't doubt that love, that presence, that nearness. And Jesus, having lived like one of us a human, knows how confusing that can be, how scaring it could be at times to be a human. And so he has sent us the Holy Spirit so that we would have the wisdom to know what to do and that we would have the courage to do it and then the joy to celebrate who we are in the image and likeness of God until we all go home to be together forever with the Lord for all eternity. And that is why we call it Letari Sunday, why we begin in the midst of what normally is a time of fasting, penance, repentance, low-key, keep the music down, even in church directives, you know, you shouldn't have lots of flowers and lots of a kind of a party atmosphere, but then suddenly we break it on this Sunday to remember that we're not play-acting. Yes, we're reflecting on things that can be very difficult. And these days, you know, the challenges we've had from the COVID pandemic, from the social unrest, from the glaring divisions in our society, both in our country and in the world, the, the racial problems, the, the gender problems, all of these things can weigh us so much down, but we're reminded, no, rejoice, because God is with you. Jesus has come to live among us. And has given us the Spirit who continues to dwell in our hearts to show us the way. Because when you live through crises like this, the people of the Old Testament through the destruction of the temple, and then having someone like Cyrus suddenly, so surprisingly, be the instrument of God to, to change their lives. And now we have lived, you and I, through coronavirus, through the social unrest, through the glaring need for, for penitence to change our own divided lifestyles, our own judgments, our own prejudices, our own lack of understanding, our own need to learn how to be generous as so many people around us are so affected by the economic fallout also of these days. Because nobody goes through a crisis unchanged. You come out e either better than you were before because you've learned so much or you'll come out embittered and begrudging because you feel so that you have suffered and that it has been unfair. So my friends, the question for us today is what have we learned from this amazingly strange year that marks one year? You know, here we had... Uh, on Friday, we had a dress down day at school in a strange way, just to kind of, I don't want to say celebrate in a way, and it was a celebration, to celebrate the marking of an exact year since we closed the school for what we so naively and innocently thought would be a couple of weeks until this strange little bug going around would, you know, disappear and you'd know what to do. And in a, you know, a couple of weeks, we'll be back to normal. And we just celebrated a year. And when I say celebrate, there were so many deaths. And there was so much sickness, so much fear, so much division in families, so many people that you couldn't see, you couldn't hug, you couldn't hold hands with and comfort. People you couldn't cry with or laugh with, but you wanted to. And yet, what have we learned? Have we come out of that better people? more sensitive, more aware of our, of our common bond, more aware of our need for each other, less egotistical because it's not all about me, because I've missed you, so it can't be about me. I'm not enough, and I've missed God. Even perhaps the fact that we're here together, you know, watching this on YouTube, 
as opposed to being able to be face to face with the people around you worshipping in a physical sense that we are worshipping together but in a only spiritual sense because we can also have that physical out you know part of it what are we learning about that about community also about prayer maybe we just kind of went with the group and let everybody else you know respond and sing and we just kind of air you know maybe made us feel good but now we've been challenged well what is prayer what is mass what's eucharist what's communion why bother what are we all about this has been a time of challenge a time to grow a time to be stronger in our faith in our commitment to god to one another to the world we're beginning a whole new life the way that when cyrus so unexpectedly said you know what you guys should be free in your own country go into freedom and i'm even going to rebuild your temple worship your god and the lord says to us gosh it's been a crazy time but i'm with you so go and be the best you can be and i will be with you you don't need someone to build the temple we don't need cyrus to build the temple because the world is the temple of god because god so loved the world he sent his son jesus and you and i live in the temple that nobody can destroy because there are no walls there's no roof it is the universe filled with god it is my heart and your heart filled with the holy spirit it is a celebration of love that's why it's a time to rejoice and so my friends then let us together proclaim what unites us in faith I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so, my friends, with faith in this loving God who forgives us and calls us home, let us present our prayers and our petitions. Let us pray, as always, for the victims of COVID, for all the caregivers, all the frontline workers. Let us continue to pray for uh, the successful outreach of the vaccine, that everyone can be vaccinated who wishes to be as soon as possible. And we beg the Lord to help us in our journey back to the freedom, the way Cyrus told the people go, you know, go up and live again freely, that we might learn just not to return to what was before, but to be transformed, to be the very best, having learned so much this past year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for Brian Martesani, class of 96, for Blake Hupson, class of 11, that the Lord will welcome them joyfully into his kingdom that they will be forever at peace, celebrating God's love. We pray for their families and their friends who miss them terribly and who mourn, that they will be strengthened <coughs> by the love of God and their friends and family and the knowledge that their sons, their brothers, their people so close to them are now enjoying the fullness of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for students everywhere. Many schools are just beginning to open. We pray for all our students here at Holy Ghost Prep who've been uh, fully back on campus for quite a while now, that the Lord will continue to bless all of the students, all of the faculty and staff of schools, and again, help us all as we 
get a sense of what this unit is and how to do the best we can as teachers, as students, as staff. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in this broken world. So much fear, so much anger, so much revenge. We pray that we learn to be makers of peace, builders of unity, that we reach with our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And what else shall we pray for, friends? Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Great and loving God, we present to you all of these, our prayers and our petitions. We ask you to grant them as you know best for us, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me of all my sin. And pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the loving Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of our hearts, that free from disordered affections, we may so deal with the things of this passing world, so as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Brian. Remember Blake. Remember all who have died in your mercy and welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and be praised and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now let us take a moment to thank the Lord for the many unexpected blessings that have come to us in the past week. And let us continue our prayer together. O God, who enlightens everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, 
that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life to your by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go to love and serve the Lord and each other. Thanks be to God.